We now have a new president-elect, which means new policies are coming. A big question that is on everyone's mind is, how will this impact my finances? Now, many of Trump's previous tax policies from his first term are actually set to expire at the end of 2025. And now that there's a Republican majority in Congress, we're almost certain to see changes to the tax code. If I had to bet, we'll see draft tax legislation later next year all of which I'm gonna be covering as it develops. Today, I wanna to break down the likelihood of each of his tax proposals actually passing and what that could mean for your wallet. Now remember, just because there's a majority in Congress doesn't mean that every proposal is gonna pass. There's you know, a lot of politics at play here and I'm gonna get into some of that. But keep in mind as I'm going through this that this is all just speculation at this point, so please don't make any tax decisions based on this. Now, Trump's most consistent tax proposal this election cycle has been to make the Tax Cut and Jobs Act permanent. That was his previous tax legislation that went into effect in 2018, and a lot of which is set to expire at the end of 2025. Moving forward, I'm just going to be referring to this as the Trump tax cuts because it's just easier to say. And I'll go through the likelihood of the Trump tax cuts getting extended pretty quick so that I can get to some of his new proposals like eliminating the income tax. So here's what Trump is proposing to make permanent from his 2018 tax cuts that are set to expire in 2026. First is the tax rates. So Trump wants to make the current tax rates permanent instead of going back to the old pre-2018 tax rates, which would be about a three to 4% increase for most people. Now, this is popular among voters. It's been a high priority for Republicans. Uh, even Democrats ran on not raising taxes for anyone making under 400,000 per year. Now that Republicans have a majority in Congress, I think this will be easier to, to push through. I give the probability of this becoming permanent or at least extended. 85%. Next, the standard deduction. So the Trump tax cut doubled the standard deduction and eliminated what was called the personal exemption, which actually simplified taxes for a lot of people. Now, Trump wants to keep it this way permanently instead of going back to a smaller standard deduction with a personal exemption. And I personally think this would make everybody happy, taxpayers and tax preparers alike. So I give the probability of this becoming permanent 90%. The child tax credit was another provision that doubled under the Trump tax cuts. It went from $1,000 per child to $2,000 per child in 2018. But like with the rates and deductions, it's set to expire at the end of 2025, meaning it will drop back down to $1,000 per child in 2026, if not extended. Now, this is an extremely popular tax credit. Extending it has had strong bipartisan support. Both parties have campaigned on not only keeping it, but even increasing it further. So I give the probability of this one becoming permanent 95%. Next, the QBI deduction. Small business owners get to deduct up to 20% of their qualified business income, but this is also set to expire in 2026. Now, both parties broadly support making this deduction permanent, although there has been some discussion on who can qualify for this to try to gear it more towards lower and middle income earners. I give the probability of this becoming permanent 85%. The estate tax exemption was also doubled under the Trump tax cuts. It's currently 13.6 million per person, but will get cut in half in 2026. Trump is proposing keeping the higher estate tax threshold. Now this has historically received support from Republicans, but Democrats wanna lower that exemption, potentially to as low as 3.5 million per person. So this one does not have bipartisan support. However, Republicans do have a majority in Congress. So I'm gonna say the probability of this becoming permanent is 75%. Now under the bonus depreciation deduction. So this allows businesses to accelerate depreciation on certain items. The Trump tax cuts made bonus depreciation 100% from 2018 to 2022. From there, it's been decreasing by 20% every year until it'll hit 0% in 2027. Now I could very much see this getting bumped back up to 100%, at least temporarily. Uh, there was a bill in Congress earlier this year that proposed making 100% bonus depreciation permanent. It passed the House, but it did not pass the Senate. Well, now we have a Republican majority Senate. So I think that increases the likelihood that bonus depreciation will get brought back in some form. Now it is a great way to boost the economy, which something as Trump has talked a lot about, the downside of that is that there is potential for inflationary pressure, particularly in industries heavily reliant on capital investments that utilize this deduction. So that is another consideration. I give the probability of bringing back a 100% bonus appreciation, at least temporarily, 80%. Last thing relating to the Trump tax cuts before we get to the fun stuff is the $10,000 cap on the state and local tax deduction, also called the SALT deduction. Taxpayers who itemize deductions can take up to a $10,000 deduction 
on state and local income taxes paid, as well as property taxes paid. Now, Trump has campaigned on removing that $10,000 cap, allowing those in high tax states to take larger deductions. In terms of the likelihood of this passing, I think that uh, Republican representatives in high tax states like New York, New Jersey, and California, they're gonna be pushing for this cap to be removed. And I, I think they'll actually have some leverage here with the House being as closely divided as it is. The Penn Wharton budget model estimated that fully eliminating the salt cap would cost $1.17 trillion over the next 10 years. There is that to contend with. I gave the probability of the salt cap being completely removed 40%. What I think is more likely is that the cap will be raised or tied to income in some way. So back in February, the House proposed a bill that would double the salt cap from 10,000 to 20,000 for married couples making under $500,000 per year. So I think it's more likely than not that the cap will get raised in some form. I just think it's less likely that the cap will be completely removed without some limitation. All right, those are the big items relating to the extension of existing tax laws. Now, what about some of those new proposals he mentioned, like eliminating the individual income tax? So he originally floated this idea on the campaign trail, and then he said it again on Rogan. So a couple things with this. If you wanted to repeal the 16th Amendment, which was the amendment granting Congress the power to impose a federal income tax, you would need two thirds approval in Congress and ratification by 38 states, neither of which have any chance of happening. I think you have a higher chance of aliens making contact than there is of Congress repealing the 16th Amendment. Now, you could keep the 16th Amendment in place and simply make the income tax zero. That could be done, but you would still likely need a 60 vote majority approval from Congress and uh, there's just no way that Congress is going to say goodbye to $2.4 trillion in revenue unless it were to be replaced with something else. And Trump's plan for that is tariffs. So let's talk about the feasibility of that. Trump's plan includes a 60% tariff on China and a 10% tariff on all other imports. Based on 2023 import data, this would generate a tariff revenue of about $0.6 trillion annually, which would only cover 27% of the $2.4 trillion revenue needed to replace individual income taxes. And that's assuming that imports stay constant, which would kind of defeat the whole purpose of tariffs, which is bringing back manufacturing here. Now, being fully funded by tariffs used to work when the federal government was a lot smaller. Up until the introduction of the individual income tax and the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913, federal spending was less than 10% of GDP, which could be funded by tariffs. Now, today, total spending is close to 25% of GDP. So unless Elon and Vivek do some major gutting over at Doge, I don't think tariffs can feasibly replace income taxes. And then any big budget cuts would need to be approved by Congress anyway. So having said all that, I give the probability of eliminating the individual income tax 0.01%. And while we're on the topic of aliens, I give the probability that aliens making contact in my lifetime, 0.5%. All right, no tax on social security. So this would be great for those currently collecting it, but not so nice for people hoping to collect benefits in the future. Um, a significant portion of taxes collected on social security benefits go back into the social security trust fund, which by the way, is already underfunded. Social Security already faces a projected 25% shortfall by 2035, meaning benefits may need to be cut by 25%, if not fixed by 2035. Similar to a Ponzi scheme, current Social Security benefits depend on ongoing contributions, and a portion of those contributions come from people paying tax on their Social Security benefits. I know it's a mess, it needs fixed, but if you say that Social Security is now tax-free, Social Security will be even more underfunded, and those reserves will run out even faster than 2035. So. I give the probability of this passing 10%. I don't think something like this could happen without a complete restructuring of social security and Trump nor anyone in recent history have campaigned on fixing it. So I don't think it's a high priority. All right, no tax on tips. Now, this is an idea that both parties have campaigned on. Senator Ted Cruz introduced the No Tax on Tips Act and Representative Thomas Massey proposed the Tax-Free Tips Act of 2024. The major pushback is that it creates disparities between tipped workers and other low-wage workers, which is true, lots of disparities in the tax code, and this would add to that. So the fairness debate might kind of stall progress on this. And it may be one of those things that Republicans end up having to compromise on in order to push through other provisions, um, because there is a budget element to all this. I believe the no tax on tips is estimated to cost between 150 and 250 billion over the next decade. Now, take these estimates for what they are, 
They're estimates, they're not exactly precise, but they are something to consider for sure. So this may be one that Republicans give up on to get other provisions through. I give the probability of passing 50%. No tax on overtime. So I think this one would be less likely to pass. It would be administratively complex to implement, and I think it would have more opportunities for abuse, and it's not necessarily limited to lower income households. I understand the intent with this one, you know, reward those putting in the long hours, but practically speaking, I think it would just be too difficult to implement effectively. So again, I think this would be one of the proposals to get thrown out if needed in order to push through making the Trump tax cuts permanent. I gave the probability of this passing 25%. Deductible auto loan interest. So this was something he mentioned during the late stage of his campaign. Right now, you can take a deduction for mortgage interest paid if you itemize your deductions. Currently, interest on auto loans is not deductible. Fun fact, this used to be deductible prior to the Tax Reform Act of 1986, along with interest on personal loans and credit card debt. Sadly, not anymore. Now, if this was structured as an above the line deduction, kind of like how student loan interest is, then it would be accessible, you know, even to more people, like for all those people taking the standard deduction, unlike mortgage interest. So I think that's really where it would be beneficial for people. You know, overall, it's not that radical of an idea. Like I could see this getting passed. I just don't know how serious he is about it. It kind of felt like one of those things he just threw out there at the end. I think he mentioned this at a rally in Detroit. I give the probability of passing 50%. Not because I think it'll get a ton of pushback, I'm just not sure it's a high priority. Tax credit for family caregivers. This was another proposal that he mentioned near the end of his campaign. This would be a tax credit for people who spend out-of-pocket costs to care for aging family members. I think this one actually has a pretty good chance of passing. There's already bipartisan support in Congress for the Credit for Caring Act, which proposes a tax credit of up to $5,000 per year for taxpayers paying for long-term care costs of spouses and dependents. So I feel good about this one. I give this a probability of 75%. Under corporate tax rates. So Trump has proposed reducing the corporate tax rate from a flat 21% to 15%. Now, back in his first term, he already made a permanent reduction of the corporate tax rate from a marginal rate of 35% to a flat 21%. Bring this down another 6% would not be cheap, and if you want to extend the Trump tax cuts provision, you're going to have to make a compromise somewhere. Now, the Tax Foundation estimated that reducing the corporate tax rate from 21 to 15 percent could result in a revenue loss of approximately $760 billion over the next 10 years. I could see them maybe dropping it down to a flat 20 percent, but all the way to 15 percent. I just think it'll be too expensive on top of the cost of extending the Trump tax cuts and deductions. I give the probability of passing 40 percent. Now, I'm not saying there won't be any cuts to the corporate tax rates or additional deductions for corporations. For example, there is some talks about modifying how R&D expenses are handled that would benefit corporations. I just don't think we'll see corporate tax rates go all the way down to a flat 15%, but I could totally be wrong on that. And finally, tariffs. So Trump has proposed raising current Section 301 tariffs on China to 60% and imposing a universal tariff on all U.S. imports of 10 to 20 percent. Now, the interesting thing with tariffs is that under certain conditions, the president can impose tariffs without congressional approval. Section 301 tariffs, for example, uh, which are retaliatory measures like those on China, those can be enacted through executive order. But the 10 to 20 percent tariff on all imports would likely require congressional approval. Let's start with the tariff on China. I think he's definitely going to try doing this. Uh, he said in a couple of interviews, Tariff is the most beautiful word in the English language. Uh, more beautiful than love, I think, is, is what he said. But it's hard to predict what will be used as leverage versus what will actually be implemented. And I have no idea how to predict how all that's going to play out. So as far as probability of passing or doing this, uh, 50%. Now, as far as the 10% tariff across the board on all imports, I don't see a tariff on all imports gaining enough support in Congress. Tariffs are intended to bring manufacturing back to the U.S., which is great but that can lead to higher prices domestically. Yes, you save on shipping costs, it helps with employment and economic growth here, but the US also has higher wage standards. You know, employees aren't getting paid $2 a day here. We also have labor protections and employee benefits like insurance and retirement plans. You know, we also don't need to put nets on buildings to prevent self-deletion due to poor working conditions unless maybe you're Goldman Sachs. So those added costs of production mean higher prices for consumers. There's a trade-off here. With domestic production, you have job and economic growth, potentially higher wages, less reliance on other countries, but the downside being potentially higher prices for consumers here, 
And that's a trade off that's hotly debated. As it stands, I don't think there would be a majority support to impose a universal tariff on all imports out of fear of furthering inflation. I gave the probability of a 10% universal tariff passing 30%. However, I could definitely see targeted tariffs on key goods that we want produced domestically, like semiconductors, medications, defense equipment, things like that. But we'll see. All right, that's it. Those are my opinions at the present moment. Would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching.